This is Introduction to General Topology by George L. Kane. This is a hardcover published by Addison Wesley. And I'm just going to give it a whiff here before we look at it. Just ah, incredible. So nice, really nice, elegant book. Let's open it up and take a look. Georgia Institute of Technology, Introduction to General Topology. Let's see if we can find the copyright, see how old this is. To the memory of George L. Kane, 1906 to 1975. Copyright 1994. Hmm. Interesting. This book is designed for an introduction to general or point set topology. Although intended primarily for an undergraduate course, the contents have been used for both an undergraduate course and for an introductory graduate course. The prerequisites are deliberately modest, and it is assumed that this will be the student's first experience with abstract mathematical reasoning. Hmm. So I think that that is a big, 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 big um, I don't know what the word is. I think if it's your first experience with mathematical reasoning, it's going to be pretty tough. Um, so it starts with it starts with sets, relations, and functions. You, you definitely want to know how to write proofs, I think, before you jump into this. Pseudometric spaces, topological spaces, continuous functions, connected spaces, compact spaces, product spaces, sequences, complete pseudometric spaces, the Bonnach fixed point theorem, Euclidean spaces, quotient spaces, hyperspaces and multifunctions, and then dimension. And then it starts here with set theory. So it's, you see the layout of the book is really nice. It's a very elegant book. It's a solid textbook. It's got good typesetting. It's got good exercises. Um, I don't believe it has any answers in the back of the book. Yeah, it just has references. Um, I gotta give it another whiff here, sorry. It's just, it's just calling me. Oh, it smells amazing, it smells amazing. So let's, let's look at this here on sets. Set theory, chapter zero. We begin with a brief introduction to the ideas and language of set theory used throughout the book. Sets. We assume that the idea of a set of objects is intuitively clear and accept as undefined the concept of a set and the concept of an object belonging to a set. Given a set S and an object X, the notation X is an S is used to indicate that X belongs to S. The fact that X does not belong to S is denoted by X not an S. If an object X belongs to the set A, we sometimes say that A contains X. We also sometimes say that X is an element or a, or a point or a member of A. And then it goes on and it defines some other things here. It's got some examples here with sets, there's some definitions. And then it starts proving things, right? It starts proving things. Here's a, here's a proof, right? So if you don't know how to write proofs, if you don't understand like um, basic proof structure, this is going to be a huge burden. That's why I said, um, I mean, typically um, for topology, not only do you want to know how to write proofs, you, you want to know how, you know, you want to have some, some math behind you, you know, maybe an advanced calculus class or something um, to make it easier. Otherwise, you'll, you'll struggle a lot. Um, I was really lucky when I took topology that I had already had a lot of math, so I was fortunate. Um, but, so it wasn't, you know, I had a harder time in other classes than, than in topology, I think. Yeah, pretty cool. I will look for it, and if I can uh, find um, any copies, I'll leave the link in the description so you can check it out. And yeah, and subscribe if you want. And also, I have courses. They're on Udemy, but use the links from my website, mathsorcerer.com. I've got courses on tons of math. I hope it's been helpful. Take care.